Welcome back to the Student Hub Live. For a lot of students, starting studying can involve some anxiety about the computer. It may not even be as far as the virtual learning environment or maybe how to submit a TMA, but some people can feel very unconfident using a computer. So I've got Richard Treves here to give us some tips on making your computer work for you in your studies. Now, Richard, you're an expert at this because you're a senior um, designer in technology enhanced learning here at the Open University. And you've got some tips for us for students who may not feel so confident um, with using a computer. And we're going to talk about some various things that they can do to support them in their studies yeah. other than the virtual learning environment, which we've covered quite a lot of. Now, I know that we've been sharing a lot of tips and ideas in the chat. Please do share those. Don't worry if you're a bit more advanced than we are. If you've got tools, I know referencing tools are often very commonly talked about. Um, MOOCs, etc. Please do share those links for new students who are joining us this evening. That would be absolutely brilliant. OK, Richard, why why are computers a bit scary for people who may not engage with some of these things like, I mean, Trello, I've never heard of this before. Um, and I know you want to talk about Twitter and social media. Mm. I mean, for some people, those can sort of just evoke a massive fear. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's like maths. It's one of those things that it just pushes people over the edge and some people have a, a really visceral kind of uh, reaction to them. Uh, but when you use them, things have got so much more friendly recently. Uh, I think they're a lot more usable for, for almost everyone. I, I grew up writing horrible code into, into computers, so it's great to see how they've been developing recently. And even the module websites, and we've been looking at the qualification websites as well, they've, mm. they've come on leaps and bounds in terms of being accessible. But for some people, even though we were talking about the qualification website, and I think Georgina had found the qualification website, she'd been having some trouble navigating it. Mm. So, how do people sort of go about finding things that might be useful for them in their studies? And what would you say to sort of start out in terms of things that might help? Well, it, it, in terms of things to, to help with their studies, I think uh, there's the VLE, obviously, and what's on the qualification site. So I thought I wouldn't talk too much about those. Yeah, we've done lots of that. It. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you some interesting things around, first of all, sort of Twitter. I think um, most people have engaged with it, or a lot of people have to a certain extent, but I think it, it's diving in a little bit deeper other than just reading what your friends had for breakfast. Or Donald Trump. Or Donald Trump, yes, that's a big one too. Uh, but it's things like what you can do with it. So you can follow people, that's a, a little at, the curly A. Yeah. So that would be a person or it would be a, a, a course. So S112, for example, has a really nice... Um, uh, site that they, they talk about what's coming up in the course and things like that. So you can follow a course, you can follow a person, you can follow me, you may find your academics on the module team are going to be there. You can follow uh, the Student Hub Live. You can follow the Student Hub Live, you've got that in, yeah. <laughs> you should. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also there's, there's a big movement recently with uh, Twitter chat ups. Twitter chat that's not really the term. But it, it, it's group meetings where people all get on Twitter and they follow a hashtag. So that's the hash. Right. And then it, it's something. So you, you follow it with uh, an OU chat or something like this. And this is really incredible is that all these people will pile in and will tweet very fast. And it's actually quite difficult to follow up. But you can be there with some real experts in your field, whatever it is, following what's going on really talking to the people who are at the cutting edge uh, and getting some attention from them sometimes as well. So these are really exciting to sort of look into and, and find the one that or, or see if there's ones that really interest you that you can you can track and follow. It always amazes me when I go to um, conferences and I remember the first time I went and everyone was sitting there on their devices, mm. um, all on Twitter. And they were putting all their questions, much like everyone does in our chat. Um, and there was this massive dialogue going on whilst the speaker was presenting. Mm. So in an academic sense, you know, people are using Twitter. But the library have also been um, talking in, in previous events about how you can use social media to support you in terms of things that interest you. Yes. So you might find, like you say, people or even areas that would support you in your studies. And, that, and I guess Twitter's a nice way of sort of keeping up to date with that, maybe on the move, maybe in your downtime, just to sort of keep abreast of of ideas. What sorts of things do you follow? What sorts of things might uh, students want to start looking for in terms of building their feeds? 
Well, they probably don't want to follow most of the people I follow because it's, it's people Computer within Computer coding. My, <laughs> yes, it's uh, educational technology, Damn things like that. Like that. So, yeah, all, all those things, I am following things that interest me and that's exactly what Twitter is about. You, you follow people and you think, oh, that might be an interesting person. So you could follow me if you're interested and then you find out that you're actually not interested in what I'm saying. So you switch me off and you found five other people to follow. So it's great. The, the thing to, to really keep a hold on though is, is it, it can get addictive. I probably do it too much is I'm sitting because you can get it on your mobile so you yeah, can yeah. sit in your downtime and flick through and that's that's to be encouraged engagement the students is, is uh, you know key to their success in all kinds of ways um, but I'm, I'm one who does it too much probably so you've got to, you've got to watch and make sure that you're you're not doing your whole life looking at it. Now, some of these things, I mean, you get feeds much like Facebook, so you'll get a generic list of everything that you follow on Twitter, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but like you say, you can also follow hashtags, so you can sort of filter, I guess, what you're looking at. Now, this is a common idea in social media, um, but do people use these filtering techniques to the best of their advantage, or do they, like you, end up on Twitter sort of scrolling through all the things because it looks so interesting? How disciplined or focused do you think one should be on social media? Oh... That's an excellent question. I, I think most people who, who get into it and get past, as I say, is, is once you worked out what the app does, once you worked out what the hash does and you start using these, you, you're quite expert. You, you can really fish around in this stuff. And then, and then the whole universe is out there to sort of find with. So yes, it is about really limiting it. And, and it's very short form. It will tell you small facts. But a lot of our education is about long thinking. It's, it, it's something that really, you know, papers and books and textbooks and, and you see there on the module sites on, on the VLE, is it, it's long, it requires a lot of concentration. So we've got to be careful not to really split our attention into tiny bits. So a lot of the OU websites and, in fact, uh, disciplinaries have uh, accounts on Twitter and they'll often populate those with lots of things that they think the students might want to know about. Mm. So it might be a nice idea, I guess, to start your studies or maybe end your studies just sort of thinking, actually, let me just have a little look at what's going on. And you could maybe search the handle of biology or, um, I mean, th there's, there's so many here at the Open University and, and sort of just sort of get a little bit of an idea about what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. OK. Um, Facebook as well can be a good thing to, to use. Um, and there are lots of different ways of, of looking at media. Um, but one thing that I did want to talk about is this Trello site here. Yes. Um, now, this looks quite interesting. You've got overviews, projects. Um, is this an organisational tool or is it something that you can it use is. to share with other people? This is, this is, well, you can share it with other people as well. This is my find of last week for myself. Okay. Um, I, I started off lecturing years ago at Sunderland University and I got very excited about a sort of personal Gantt chart thing I did with paper and pen and I would plot I've out. I've never made a Gantt chart. That's yeah. again one of my aspirations. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I got around you, to. You go with it or you don't. And I got very excited because this changed my life. It really right. helped me organise things. Uh, and one of my colleagues said, can you come and talk to the third year students because they're having trouble with their projects about this. So I said, yeah, 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 I'll come and infuse and talk about it. And I did. And uh, none of them used it at all. And none of them really understood what the heck I was doing. Um, but it meant for the rest of the year, they all, every time I was late for anything, they were, oh, your time management's not working there, Richard. <laughs> so I, I, I've always been into these. They've been really useful. And, and, it, it, and that tells you something as well. You've got to be very careful about telling people they should do it. So I suggest people may like this. I think it's, it's been a revelation for me. And if that's not, they can let you know on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what you can see, if I, if I talk you through it a bit there, that Trello is made up of what's called boards. So that's the coloured background, so you can think about that as a physical board. Okay. And on that, you've got lists. So I'm thinking particularly with students, they can have the, sort of their TMAs and things they have to do with their TMAs as they go through. Yeah. And then on, on, the, on the lists within that, you can have certain tasks that, you know, you've got to read some things, you've yeah. got to talk to some people, maybe you want to talk to your tutor before it. So you can really track what's going on on, on all this thing. And, and it's lovely because you can actually pick them up and, and drag these really nicely from, from place to place uh, and, and move them around and go, well, actually, that reading doesn't go with TMA1. I think actually it's in TMA2. Drag it over there and drop it over there. So it's, it's, really, it's really intuitive how it works and there's all kinds of details in there. You can start setting times for yourself and it will ping and, and go red um, when it needs to be done and, and things like that. So it's, it, it's absolutely fantastic. But you can also share it with someone. So we have 
I have them with my partner, we have a household one of, of all the things and we keep on moving things into each other's boxes. And important, not important. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. And you can, you can define this in any way you want. So you have TMAs, you can have important not, or, or done on Tuesday. Yeah. So the sky's the limit. It's, it's really very flexible. And also the great thing is it works on mobile. So yeah. you can be sat on your computer seeing all the lists as we have here. And you can see the whole range of them really nicely. Or you can be sitting on the bus thinking, ah, I've got to do that and tap it straight in, straight there, and you want, you're you not going to forget it. So okay, really they're good. liking the sound of this in the chat room, Richard. Let's see what else is going on. Yes, we're just having a great discussion about all the tools that we use uh, during study. So uh, things like Zotero, Grammarly, uh, we're talking about OneNote. I like using OneNote as well. Uh, we like large white balls, boards. That's uh, another tool that's a bit low tech. Uh, Simon says, hashtag Pinkie Pie is better than Applejack. So we're having a conversation there. Uh, LinkedIn is great for promoting yourself professionally. So that's, uh, we talked about careers, about the benefits of using that. Uh, Ronald uh, just likes the module website. So you saw lots of links and tools on there. Uh, talking about Facebook groups as well, picking up on uh, the points that we're making. And uh, Jane says Trello sounds interesting and uh, Davin says it was used a lot by the um, computing students in their final IT projects as well. Oh, nice. And of course Hayley says we've got pen and paper so that's what, in yeah. the end that's what we're all using. It's And highlighters. And highlighters of course, yeah. yes we like using our highlighters. <laughs> Now, some really good tips there. And it all, I always sit here, Richard, whenever the students share all these ideas. And as somebody who still writes references in longhand and bitterly regrets it every time I do, because I'm fully aware of the um, benefits of, of some of these referencing packages, I often think, is it worth the time and investment in doing some of these? And how do students then choose what might be most useful when there's so many wonderful apps? Um, in particular, for the older of us uh, who sit there thinking, actually, I'm not that au fait with this. If I sat down and tried to figure this out, that's going to take me 45 minutes, maybe tops. It looks a bit scary. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd be able to use it. Would I log on to it every day? And you were talking about your time management and these people saying, well, Richard, you're late. Da, da, da. So when is it worth this investment in terms of these sorts of tools and techniques paying off in terms of helping you. I mean, I must say, I do bitterly regret not getting the referencing stuff. And I was talking to the library the other day who's going to show me how to do it. And I must put half an hour aside because I recognise now that whilst it wasn't important, mm. now actually I'm probably on a massive deficit with all of this long handwriting. Yeah, yeah. So what do you say to students about making time and when to make the time for what? How do they know what might work for them? I, it's impossible to say exactly for each student's situation. It depends on their own uh, likes and their own situation of what they want, really. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, it's worth sometimes putting the investment of time in to really working something out for yourself. Yeah. And uh, But mostly, I mean, I found out about this because one of my colleagues invited me to a Trello board and said, uh, we, we're discussing some student feedback about this. Um, here is all the data and I started playing around with it and I go, ah, I understand what this is and I suddenly saw it and the light bulb went on and off I go. So yes, but it, it is it is something about it, the investment of time and then you see it when you, when you yeah. come back. And I think it, it comes down to uh, paper and pen itself is that I still scribble notes on bits of paper yeah. to myself because it's so quick and I don't have to worry about it yeah. and the battery doesn't run out and, and, and lots of students uh, will also want to do that and that's great and fantastic um, in its place but I think there's also a flip side to it which is sometimes we need to be writing notes electronically and the big well or consider doing that because the big advantage is everything searchable. Like someone mentioned OneNote. Yeah. I, I use OneNote obsessively. Right I've heard a lot about OneNote and that's mm. one that HJ is often telling me I should use. What's so special about that? Well, I'm particularly playing around with it as a notepad system because it's coming in the Open University. We're getting Office 365. Okay. One night will we'll be there, and it, it's, a, it's a way of you writing your notes. Uh, and again, you can do it on your computer, and then you can see it on your phone. Uh, and so the it search. syncs up with everything. Yeah, that's right. So it's your to-do list is always with you. That's which could it. be a good thing or a bad thing. That's <laughs> it. And it will actually do a to-do list for you as well. Uh, so I had to-do lists in OneNote before I found Trello and then Trello was just so much better for me, I moved on. Um, but yes, OneNote is the same and it's coming, but at the moment, it, it's unfortunately, it's been delayed in the rollout to November now. 
So I didn't, I didn't want to talk too much about students because computer yeah. systems, they just fall out of your head. Yeah. If you talk about them in detail, you'll just forget it instantly. So it, it's, but it, the potential of writing notes and writing them electronically, and it's that being able to search. Right. Is, is I recently looked for a little piece, again, it was at Sunderland University, I wrote years ago, I wanted to show someone. I just put it in and it was always almost magical. I haven't seen the thing in 15 years. It's there somewhere in my, in my deeper file system and I knew what to search and it had a good search term. And ping, OneNote did that? Ping, it popped up. This wasn't OneNote, this was just me searching, oh, but it's right, the power yeah. of search. It's, yeah. it's, you can use OneNote, you can use Apple Notes, the So same. you can do to-do lists and mm. you can do writing notes. And I can see, yes. I mean, HJ does to-do lists um, for us actually when we're setting up and it's great when you've got sort of things that are, you know, repetitive. Yes. So if, for example, you're always writing a TMA and you always know that you're going to have to research the topic, re you know, breaking down tasks and things, those sort of to-do lists that can be electronically stored that you can adapt yes. and sort of break down, I can see how they would be really useful. Yes. What other functions do you use OneNote for and what might our Level 1 students um, benefit from that sort of package, even if it's not OneNote itself? I think the, something I use it for quite a lot is taking screen grabs or something. If something's diagrammatic, right. you can take a screen grab, so yeah. you've got a, a physics graphic, say, you, you drag it, it cuts it out for you, you yeah. drop it in your notes, and then either you can write notes on the side, which is the easy thing, if you really want to be sophisticated, you can go to draw and you can draw all over it and scribble all over it. Uh, I, I have an iPad for doing that, it's particularly useful for, for doing it that way, but there's all kinds of different ways of doing it. But it, it allows you to grab those screen grabs, yeah. and that's something you what can't do. What about all the formatting? Because some, in some programs, um, like Word for example, sometimes mm. when I put things in, all of a sudden it will get things around the wrong way and yes. it's hard to sort of place things, isn't it, sometimes? Yes. Yes, or maybe that's just me, probably just me. No, it, it, copying things around will mess the formatting up and, yeah. and uh, everyone hates it and I don't think there's any easy way around it. Really. No, OK. What about storage um, of work? Should students be archiving their TMAs so that they can look back on them lovingly in future years? <laughs> Should they be backing their stuff up? I mean, what yes. is the sort of hot topic right now in terms of storage? Well, I would say that storing things and, and having backups is really incredibly important and it's one of those things like clearing out the garage that no one ever wants to do but we all know we really should but it, it's just just imagine what happens if your computer dies now what what would you lose i can see the look of horror on your face i know well, <laughs> i i have had students who have had this happen to yes. them and it's absolutely desperate yes. uh, and it's not it's not just work it's not just tmas it can be all your photos now because we all have stuff yeah so all your devices you've got to have a idea of how you're backing that up. There's various ways of doing it. The Probably the easy, straightforward way is to buy an external hard drive. If you've got a, a computer as your main device, plug in your hard drive, there's programs out there, it will just back everything up. What so, about these clouds? Yes, so I'll, I'll get onto the cloud. Um, the, the, that's that's going to cost you about £50 pounds or so for an external hard drive, depending on how many files, but it will, it will do your whole computer. If you haven't got that much stuff, or, or you know you've got important things that you want backing up. There are various... Well, you can't be regularly <laughs> organised enough to plug it in all the time. Yes. Uh, the cloud is really a, another operation. Now, this, again, with uh, Office 365. Office 365 is the big container of all this great stuff. Yeah. So OneNote, OneDrive, all these things. Word and PowerPoint as well are in there, aren't they? Yes, yeah. Um, so they're, they're all in there. And uh, I've got actually a prop to kind of explain what the cloud is about, if you like. Oh, go on Cause, then. Because I find people, people struggle with this. See, I trust the cloud. I think I, I store my stuff in a cloud somewhere and I have ultimate trust in all of this, despite having all of my stuff on my computer um, yes. uh, deleted one year. Yes. Mm. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk you through this. Is that um, normally we have... Uh, I'll take my little man out. We have your computer and people understand that and uh, you, you have a file, so you take your file out of your computer, you do something with it, you write it, you, you edit it, and then you save it back to your computer and you know exactly where it is. Everything is completely understood. You know where everything is. The cloud is a little bit more mysterious. It is, it, we don't quite know where it is, so I can put it out of camera short. Uh, and it, it, it goes, we don't quite know where everything is, but that doesn't matter because your file you have your file, you create your file, you store it in the cloud, 
and then you go somewhere and uh, you, you pick it back up and you're not sure where it's saved but it is saved somewhere. Now that, that's fantastic. The great thing about this is that someone else can come along and pick this up from somewhere else because it's not on your physical computer, it's out there on the cloud. So you can share it with someone, people can work at it at the same time. And also if your computer dies, it's okay because it's all there in the cloud. It's all there saved somewhere else. So it's a great backup system is doing things in the cloud. Now, the way I would suggest people do things at the moment is, um, uh, is to do it with, uh, there's the Dropbox, um, and there's, there's other systems out there as well. OneDrive is coming, that's going to be the Open University one. Okay. You can sign up for it at the moment, but it's going to get confusing if you have two OneDrives. Is that part of Office then, or? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. But Office 365 is the whole thing. Yeah. OneDrive is like the hard drive of your computer with all your files, yeah. all your files structure yeah. on. Now, the other, the other thing is, that's one thing. So you can have your files, you can put them in your computer, or you can put them uh, in the cloud, but you can also have uh, programs that we usually have working from your computer. So you call Word up and it does things. So here's my little robot man doing things. Um, but also, and this is the bit that people find a little bit difficult, is from OneDrive, uh, sorry, One, uh, Office 365, you can call programs. So from within a browser, you can call Word and operate on your files and then save it to the cloud. And you're all on my computer in my office. You can, you can log in and do this. That's the possibilities that, that Office 365 and working in the cloud gives you. Wow. Um, so it, it, it's incredibly powerful because you can be at a conference, you can be anywhere, you can be on the bus and look at your files. And so if you, you don't need all the programs installed. So like some iPads don't have Word or something on them and you can only maybe read them. Mm. This would give you the chance to actually be able to do something without having to have all of the software installed. That's right, you don't have to install it. Now the, the problem with that is the, the little robot man in the cloud is cut down. He's not as good as Office working on your computer. It's not got so many features. It's, yeah. not, it's not so powerful. No. Um, but for quick edits, yeah. and again, you can sit on the bus and look at your Word, your Word files now, um, but it's a lot more difficult to operate because you're on a very small screen. So you don't want to work that way, obviously. But in an emergency and something, you can, you can really do that. Excellent. Well, Richard, thank you so much for coming on and telling us about this. Will you come back uh, in our February event and tell us about Office 365, assuming sure, yeah. that that's all in store? And that's been, uh, that's been a really fantastic um, set of ideas, I think. I, I think I might have a look at some of these and invest a bit of time. And for students just sort of getting ready for module start, I guess maybe they might want to think of something that could help them in their studies as well. So thank you very much. OK, that, that's the end of our show today. Um, oh, I've had a brilliant day. We've done so, so, so much. HJ, what's been the best thing for you and everyone at home? I think it's just sharing all these tips. So I think I'm getting there and being ready for the next academic year, starting modules. But uh, And we've had some great tips today. So uh, actually, uh, I think it was Will had a great tip for this set session so uh was aiming to reference longhand this year and then use tools next year so he's got an idea of uh everything behind it but uh yeah if you want to send us more tips or uh pictures for the board or or biscuits, or biscuits uh, study snacks or uh what your setup looks like or some of the tools you're using we'd love to see that uh student hub at open.ac.uk or at Student Hub Live on Twitter. And Ruth sent in a lovely photo of uh, all her stationery since we had a chat about that earlier. So uh, oh, she, she said she's glad she's not the only one that's excited about stationery. So, yes, yeah, send your stationery in or uh, pictures of you power napping or your study space and study buddies. But uh, it'll be great to see everyone tomorrow as well. Or if you're not joining us then, another time, see how you're getting along. And uh, I'd just like to end with... Uh, Peter's comment uh, that uh, he's really excited for the start date and uh, feeling really ready and uh, he never thought he uh, would study for a degree. So it's really good to see Peter excited to start on his journey.
Oh, thank you. It is. It's an amazing journey. It really is. And the OU is just such a fantastic place. Thank you, everybody, for sharing all of your tips and ideas and inspiration. Um, we've had an amazing day. What we've done today is we've met some students. Uh, we've talked about fighting fake news with trusted content. Uh, we've talked about looking after yourself in your studies um, with the sports and exercise uh, team. We've looked at creative uses of stationery. Um, we've had uh, the student support team in to tell you how they can support you. We've done an assessment uh, session. We've had some chemistry live. We've had our Wheel of Ologies quiz. We've looked at studying with additional needs, the open programme and flexibility, the ambitious futures graduate programme um, and of course our religious studies discussion and finally our session on making your computer work for you and your studies. So we've certainly covered a lot and we've been replaying our boot camp sessions which are all very skills based. So if you'd like to learn a little bit about reading, writing, note taking, the virtual learning environment, do check out the boot camps. You can watch all of that on Catch Up. It's on the Student Hub Live website. That's studenthublive.open.ac.uk. Join us tomorrow for another jam-packed session. Um, I'm most looking forward to our sessions on what type of learner are you. We're going to take a look at some learning styles and, again, thinking about how we can uh, learn most effectively. We're also going to look at how we use student feedback about volunteering, uh, the history of the OU and uh, some of the archives. The graduate school are coming along. We've got the OU Students Association, tutor Q&A, um, and we've got some news. Uh, we're talking about student feedback. Then we've got a space science chat, which is going to be very exciting, managing your study workloads, and then what is normal, benchmarking and setting your expectations. So some great time and space to... Uh, Think about your studies, think about your expectations and what's going to work most for you. Join us tomorrow, live from 10. Email us in the meantime. We'd love to know what you think. So drop a line to studenthub at open.ac.uk, fill in our feedback form and tell your other students and tutors about it. And we hope that you can come and join us tomorrow. That's all from us today at the Student Hub Live. Bye for now and thanks for watching.